Hi there. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this PicTech 6225A power supply. First of all, I want to say thank you very much PicTech for sending this uh, unit in. Uh, I asked uh, for it because uh, <laughs> my 6227 is uh, bolted to a wall. So it's basically a fixed power supply, let's say like that. <laughs> and this one will be, uh, actually this one, because this is its picture, this is for the 6227. Uh, or actually this is 6226. Do we have the 6225? Yeah, 6225A. So uh, maybe I should have started like this. So they have... Um, the same box for all of them and they just uh, tick whatever model is in here anyway so i kind of needed a power supply that i can uh, take with me where needed uh, mostly my father needs to fix uh, pcbs for central heating systems in those mostly capacitors fail relays stuff like this simple stuff they are at least the older models are quite simple Newer ones, uh, lots of uh, uh, integrated circuits and that those are a pain to fix, but older models, simple fixes. But we need something to basically be able to test the relay themselves and see if they are working reliably, because they could be working now, but uh, two clicks later, not working anymore. Uh, something like this, you can simply on off, on off, and you can test it 20 times like that. Until now we were doing that with the uh, old transformer or sometimes for 12 volt relays with an old car battery but uh, <laughs> yeah that's not uh, ideal. So thanks again Big Tech for, um, for sending this in will be put to good use. So now let's see uh, what it can do and uh, have a little bit of play with it. And it's out of the box. Let's do this. Ha, that was satisfying. We have the power cable itself. Decent quality with standard uh, um, ha, earth connection and also with the variant with the third pin. This is basically like a computer cable and it seems to head uh, to head <laughs> to have this added uh, filter on it, ferrite filter. Maybe this PSU prefers uh, that variant. On the back of it, we have a little uh, brushless fan, 5 volt, 0 0.15 amps. Here, I think we have a fuse in this lower area. It's running uh, now on 230 volts. A little bit more info in here about input and output and about the fuse. So it's a fast 3 amp fuse or a 6 amp fuse if it's running on 115. Okay. So, uh, yeah, terms of weight. So what you would expect from, from a power supply, basically, not too much, not too little. The feet themselves, foam, let's plug this in, undo the wrap on this cable, at the front of it we have uh, the leads. Let's see on the leads what we have. Cat 3, 1000 volts. Cat 4, 600 volts. And from what I understand, this means they are double insulated. Negative. 
positive clips themselves. Can we get this a little bit out of the way to take a little bit of a look? Yes, we can. Wires are soldered, so not just crimp, and you can see the double insulation. It's the white one in the middle and then the black one on top of it. And also crimped right in here so it cannot move. That's proper job and this is how it should be done. And now let's grab onto something so it's easier to slide this back in. That's a little bit of a trick. Another one, yeah, I'm going to show it to you but it, it's exactly the same thing. Can double insulate it. Perfect. And now, uh, what can you do? Power this little thing on. Should be fairly simple to operate. So it has push buttons and it seems to have a dedicated button for voltage and dedicated button for current and output from a simple switch. And yes, we also have ground connection, but in our case for a relay or stuff like that, a little uh, toy motor that I want to test to show you now, uh, that's not necessary. So uh, yeah, we can power it up now. If I could actually get the cable out of the way. Let me maybe move. Uh, actually, I think you will be able to see it. Yes, this can short. So initially, be careful. Yeah, maybe it was a good idea to actually start from mains first and then start in here really easy to read display this display looks really well and it's really easy to read which i like 5.1 amps i thought 5 was the limit so it's letting us go to 5.1 actually that's good and <laughs> did we get a little bit of a bonus yeah 5.1 is the max extremely easy to operate so this is coarse and this is fine it's extremely extremely easy to operate honestly to zero it out i think i go to the maximum and then it zeros out and i can go uh, probably also would work with the minimum to zero out the last two let's see so we have something in there uh, yeah to the minimum you also zero out those so you don't try to get it right on zero let's see an amp and for volts it was at 30 which is max or it will allow us to go to 31 volts yeah 31 volts again a little bit over uh, the absolute limit let's go to 5 volts and i will search or actually 3 volts i think i will search for a little um, toy motor to play around with it and see how it, uh, the rpm increases with voltage and we're back, changed the angle of um, the camera a little bit so we can uh, take a better look. I have absolutely no clue what voltage this Mitsumi motor from an old printer needs. So let's try with one volt. Probably the current is too low, but let's see what happens. Basically nothing, the voltage is too low. And it's spinning the little guy but the voltage is still too low. We can directly adjust it without uh, stopping the output. Probably this is a 12 volt or something like that because it's spinning really slowly now. Yeah. This is more like it. So this is the current that it uh, needs. We are in cold constant voltage mode. If we push on this and uh, lower its uh, available current, uh, actually not, let's go like this first to lower it. Ah, we went directly to zero, give it a bit more. should start spinning so if we don't give it enough current 
then we basically switch to constant current and the current is the limit. You will see in a moment. You see? Because it uh, cannot maintain the voltage with such a low current. And we are in constant current. If we go above the minimum that or the nominal that this motor is using when running, we switch back to constant voltage at 12 volts. This is really simple to operate on off. You see, when starting it wants to pull more. So we are limiting it to uh, 0, 0, 004 amps. And uh, for a moment it's in constant current, but then switches to constant voltage. It's really cool to see uh, things like this. And when you see them, you start to understand, the, uh, understand them a tiny bit better. Not perfect, but a tiny bit better. And this is an example of a relay that uh, sometimes needs to be checked. This is from a thermostat, a wireless one. You can see from this board right here. Um, 24 volt DC. And basically these are the three output pins, a common one and a closed, normally closed, normally open one. So common one right here, this long strip and the other two. And from these two at the bottom, you give it 24 volts and measure right here or right here, depending uh, what you need. And uh, do that 20 times to make sure that it's reliable and repeatable. And if it begins to fail at any point, uh, well, you have a problem and you need to replace it. I'm not going to inject uh, 24 volts into it because electronics might not be happy to get uh, a voltage from uh, the opposite end. So yeah, and I know this one is fully working. I just wanted to show you an example. I don't have one that uh, is not working at the moment, but yeah, this would be perfect to test. You simply connect it and on, off, on, off. And you click that relay uh, away. And obviously you measure the resistance uh, to make sure it's uh, closed when it should be closed and perfectly closed, not some really high resistance. So yeah, that's about it. As we told Pit Tech Tools, certificate of uh, factory calibration right here. And then we have our manual, which I'm going to go on a limb and guess that it will start with English from the middle. They always do. And I like stuff like this. Uh, they carry on uh, these rules through all of their e equipment. So easy to find English. Feel free to, to read all the info right here. So this seems to be a shared manual between the two units. The difference between them that this one can output 10 amps uh, max. But for uh, our needs, uh, this unit was more than enough. So it didn't make a sense to have a more powerful unit and uh, not use its capabilities. As you could hear, the fan did not kick in for me. Or at least I don't think it did. Let me just try again. No, I cannot feel it at all. So most likely only when the unit uh, heats up from uh, using it, uh, the fan will uh, do its thing and start to cool it down, that, which means that most of the time it's probably completely silent. Operating method right here and cautions. Now let's put it next to the bigger brother 6227 and see how they compared one to the other in terms of size. Something that I missed. And I actually forgot uh, that uh, this is doable because normally I'm working alone in here and uh, nobody has a chance uh, to change a voltage or something like that by mistake. And my power supply is bolted to the wall, so I cannot bump into it and change anything. Uh, you can activate a lock if you press both of these for three seconds. Did I lock it? 
Yep. And now again, three seconds to unlock. No, still locked. Only this advantage from what I see, it's not uh, signaling this in any way. So, uh, yeah. But I think it's flickering at every second, so probably you, you wait for four flickers to be sure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nope, maybe we need five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so that seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, there's that. Let's compare the two. From what we can see here, they have the same overall size. And uh, overall uh, design and uh, arrangement and whatnot. So that's uh, nice when you have, I don't know, uh, something good. I always like to stick to it and uh, Pictex seems to be doing the same. And because I'm quite sure somebody will say, hey, but you didn't show us how precise it is. Let's see. Although I'm quite sure the current clamp will not uh, like being so close to all of these wires. Where is the switch? Here is the switch. But let's see. Does it like or doesn't it like? Hopefully you can. Uh, yeah, a bit of reflections, but I hope you can read. Oh, let's get back down to eight, let's say. This remains on 40 and uh, let's give it a go. Quite precise. 25 milliamps, 25, 26, so it's really precise. Increase this to... And I think I actually took another motor by mistake. This one is noisier, so sorry about that. Let me hold it in my hand so it's less noisy. Zero twenty-eight, sorry, milliamps. This is showing zero twenty-six. For me, that's more than close enough. Uh, I've seen that in DC, it's a bit trickier to to check uh, the current than in AC. And again, really close to the twelve uh, volt that uh, it should be. And it seems this motor is actually drawing less than the other one. It's a different uh, Mitsumi model, also from a printer, obviously. Pretty cool. And I think we can be more precise than that. You see, this reads uh, 3 milliamps in here. So I think we can uh, go again to delta to make it zero out, because it's close to things. And yeah, DC uh, current in DC milliamps, it's really tricky. Now uh, let's do this again. Lift this thingy and give it a go. And now we are kind of bang on. Yep, that's uh, quite cool and quite good in my book. And yeah, I don't think I uh, mentioned this. It has a memory, so when you power it on, it comes back to your last setting because probably uh, you are using it for similar jobs, so it makes sense to come back to the last setting. And uh, that's about it. Thank you very much again, PicTech, for sending this in. As always, it will be put to, to good use. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and see you in the next video.